This video tutorial is about screen sets in Logic Pro 10. Screen sets is arguably one of the coolest features of Logic Pro 10. I have to admit that the way screen sets are managed in Logic can be confusing at first, but it all makes a lot of sense once you get it. Bottom line, screen sets can speed up your workflow tremendously. I simply can't imagine working without them anymore. Here is an example for how to create a screen set. When you first open a new project, the active screen set is screen set 1. You can tell because in the screen set menu, which you find just left of the help menu, you see the number 1 for screen set 1. For this example, I picked a song I've been working on. I already finished recording all my tracks and regions. Now I want to create a screen set that shows all the tracks and all the regions of my song at an optimized zoom level. I only need the main window for that, which is also the only window that is open by default when you start a new project. First we need to close all those edit windows and inspectors I don't want to see in my screen set 1. Let's use those handy key commands that we all love so much. F to close the project file window. I closes the channel strip inspector and typing E closes the piano roll editor in my example. Now we see only the main windows track header and workspace area. To see all the tracks and regions of the project, press command A to first select all regions and then Z to make logic automatically set the zoom level that shows all the regions. Make sure you immediately deselect all regions with the key command Shift, Option and D. Otherwise, you may accidentally move or delete all regions. Now we want to lock the screen set to prevent Logic from overriding it. You might remember that Logic always saves any changes you make to a screen set unless it is locked. That's it. I can now quickly recall this layout for this particular song by selecting Screen Set 1. Let's now create a second screen set that shows several MIDI editors. About the logic windows. It's important to understand that we can open a window inside the main window or as a separate second window that we can move around freely. The window menu shows us all the independent windows and their respective key commands. As you can see, there are 18 windows we can open position and size them however we please. We can even open several instances of the same window. As they say, the sky is the limit. This allows us to customize our screen sets to fit our workflow perfectly. In our previous example, we only used the main window. For screen set 2 though, I don't want to include the main window because I have that already in screen set 1. Instead, I want to create a collection of several MIDI editors and the marker list. The first step to customizing a screen set is to select that screen set. That's what trips most users. In my case, this means I press 2 to select screen set 2 before I do anything else. Before we start making changes to a screen set's layout, we want to make sure it isn't in lock mode. To do so, we go to the screen set menu to find out which lock mode option is available. If we see lock as an option, it means the screen set is unlocked and vice versa. Now I'm ready to create my layout for screen set 2. As I explained in my introduction, I don't need the main window for this layout. I'm only concerned with MIDI editing here. Here is another important piece of information for you. A screen set has to have at least one open window. If we close the last window, Logic thinks we want to close the project. Hence, we need to first open a second window before we can close the main window. Let's now pick a few media editing related windows from the window menu. By the way, this might be a good time to memorize the key commands for those windows. Command 4 for the piano roll editor window Command 5 for the score editor window. Command 7 for the event list editor window. The marker list window is actually not part of the window menu, but instead can be found in the navigation window. 
It does not have a key command assigned to it by default. I assign the key F19 to it because I use it a lot. Let's now open those windows. I type command 4 to open the piano roll editor window. Now that I have two windows open, I can close the main window. Let's position and size it right away. Next, I type command 5 to open the score editor window and position and size it underneath the piano roll editor window. Now I open the navigation list window that we find in the navigation menu. Let's place it in the lower right corner. And lastly, I type command 7 for the event list editor and position and size it to the right of the piano roll editor window. Screenset 2 has now a great MIDI editing layout. Let's make sure it stays like that by selecting Lock from the Screenset menu. Now is also a good time to name it. I call it MIDI Editors. I have now two very useful screensets for my song that I can instantly access by typing the number 1 for Screenset 1 and 2 for Screenset 2. One last important tip. You might want to use an existing screen set as a template for a new screen set. You can easily do that by using the duplicate screen set command from the screen set menu. In the duplicate screen set dialog, you can determine the new screen set number and a new name. I hope you enjoyed this logic tutorial on screen sets. Get the free transcript of this tutorial at musictrainingonline.com forward slash logic dash screensets.